One, two, three, four. There are times I wonder if I'm really alone. There are times I wonder if I'm true. There are times when I feel alone in a full room. There are times I feel alone with you. You are enough, you are enough of you. And there's always a love for you. Sometimes I wonder if I'm real or if I'm seen. Yeah, I like to think of it as like your biological family and your logical family. I think there's Armistead Maupin that, that talks about it that way. But um, yeah, I think, you know, being trans has affected my relationship with, you know, my biological family um, for the better um, in a couple of ways. Um, one, you know, things were really tough when I started, when I came out to my parents. They were tough because I made them tough and they were tough because my parents made it tough. It was 50-50. You know, I was so early on in my process that I was so vulnerable and defensive and prone to seeing slights where there were none. I gave myself so much leeway and patience to come to terms with who I was and I gave my parents almost none. Um, and you know, that's still a deep wound, I think within me, is that I allowed myself years to come to terms with who I really was. And when my parents weren't on board, the second I told them, I was like, fuck you. And that, I mean, looking back, I lost a lot of years that I could have been connected to them. Um, and that's, that's still very, very painful to me. Um, and I don't think there's a solution. I try to have peace with where I was in my life. I was young, you know, I was pretty broken by what the process had been like for me. Um, but I still to this day apologize to my mom especially for how shitty I was in, during that process. Um, and she apologizes for how shitty she was. You know, it was really difficult for her um, to, to deal with losing a daughter. It was difficult for her because my mom is a pretty masculine woman. She has two brothers that she grew up with who like totally beat her up all the time. They were like rough and tumble kids. So she was like, I don't, like, I don't get it. I can change a tire. I have fixed the roof on our house by myself. I can do all the plumbing. Like, I can do all the man things. You can also do all the man things, but, like, as a lady. Um, and it was a really, really hard for her to realize that, like, it was not about her. Um, and that was tough. But I think, as with all relationships where you go through a hard period, the the resiliency of the relationship after that is just, it's just huge. So the way I think, I think that that really forged our relationship in steel. So now it's like, look, when my mom figured out I was basically covered in tattoos under my clothes, she was like, well, it's not the worst thing we've been through. And when I be basically became a parent overnight to two kids, she was like, well, we can handle this because I've already had to deal with you being a transsexual. So whatever it is that has come, what can, like, came up for us, it feels like we can make it through this. Um, so I think that our relationship is very, very strong, um, and she is, you know, really become more like sort of a poster parent, I guess, for, for be, you know, as a parent of a trans kid. Yeah, and my dad's fine too. He's always been fine. <laughs> He's just like a super easygoing dude. So, yeah. My relationship my, with my family and my gender. It was a little tricky at first. When I first came out as a lesbian when I was 17, my sister was like, oh, it's just a phase. It's something that people do in their high school. I'm like, no, this is not a phase for me. I don't think that's what this is. But most of the people that I have dated have been on the more androgynous scale. And I think for my family that was a little hard because they were like, well, they're androgynous. Why don't you just date a boy? I'm like, well, it's not the same thing. Like, I, I can understand why some people have that mentality, but I just feel like it's kind of silly. But over time, like, 
it's definitely gotten better. Um, I think that my sister was the hardest person to crack, um, but I think we've gotten to this point in our relationship where she just knows better than to try to tell me what to do with my life or how I present myself. But my mom's kind of always been like, you do you and be who you want to be, which has been really great. And um, I have really good relationships with my mom and my sister. It's just my life is very different from theirs, especially since I moved to Seattle and started getting more um, involved in the queer community. And uh, But it's funny because my partner is transmasculine and he's the first person that I've ever dated in that capacity. And they love him. Like, they're, it's like their favorite person I've ever dated, ever. And at first I was like really nervous and they met him. Like, oh, they're gonna judge him and they're gonna think all these things. And I don't even know, but they like really have tried to educate themselves and learn since I've moved here and like really been so open and forward about how I identify. No, because I haven't told them. <laughs> I don't feel comfortable, um, especially, you know, I feel my parents are really supportive of me and like they don't care that I'm queer they're like love whoever you want but I feel like they couldn't handle me being non-binary and they couldn't understand it they would they couldn't understand and so I just don't feel comfortable telling them. I haven't come out to my family yet um because I in any fashion I'm sure at this point they suspect something's up um, it's just easier not to say anything and it's not that I think that they're going to disown me or love me any less I just know that they're not gonna understand and I just don't look forward to being invalidated or having to answer a ton of questions to convince someone of my own identity Yes, yes it has. Um, whenever I first came out, they were rather heartbroken and worried and, you know, I mean, it was just really hard for them. And I think a large reason of why it was so hard for them is from a very young age, I hid myself from my family in multiple ways. I lived with my family, but I rarely interacted with them. I would spend my time just away, just not not at home, or if I was home, not with them. So as a result, you know, I, I moved from my birth town to Austin, Texas the second I turned 18. Like, I just couldn't wait. I just went there as fast as I could. and. As soon as I got there, I kind of, and it feels awful to say this because I was raised by model parents. Like my parents did everything right. We, we never fought. We always had everything that we needed within reason. And in some cases we even, you know, helped and took other people in and they were always there for me and they, tried their hardest and I have immense respect for them and to be completely honest the reason that we weren't as close was entirely on me like I did not um, I just did not tell them anything about myself and when I moved out I communicated with them as pretty much only on a necessary basis and to be 100% honest, you know, it got to the point where I really only talked to them if I was in deep shit and I needed somebody to bail me out. And they did it over and over again. Um, they did it a lot. So imagine, you know, 27 years old telling your parents that you are trans when you never even told them you were queer in the first place. Like, this wasn't like a... This wasn't like a thing where like I said I was gay and then like it was like oh well now I'm trans and like da 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 like it was just all at once just laid it out there over the phone. Um, they had trouble speaking with me for a while like we could only communicate through text or something and it took like a year 
before things really started to get better. I think we both made really positive efforts on it. Like we both kind of saw it as something to work towards because, you know, I told them like, this is it. Like, I'm not going back because if I don't do this, I'm, I'm going to kill myself. Like I just will, you know, like I'm amazed I made it this long without committing suicide. And um, now things are quite a bit better, but I've been out here a year and I still haven't seen them in person. And, you know, like whenever I do see them, I mean, I've been on HRT for going on a year and a half, maybe even two years. It's hard to keep track just because of like kind of issues I had with the medical world. But, I mean, physically, I look different. I, I look significantly different than I did before. And while they see, like, pictures on Facebook once in a while, I know that when I see them, it's going to be quite a big deal. Um, Post-transition, though, even though I'm still not good at it, I found myself making more of an effort to communicate with them and to call them up and to say, like, hey, how was your day? And I'm still not doing it nearly as frequently as I should, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to do that. Because I told them when I did come out, like part of telling them was like, I promised them that they would finally meet me, that they would finally see who I really was. My gender is kind of affected my relationship with my family. In the beginning, they were, because they're still sort of religious, they were a little weird about it. Uh, my mom was initially like the coolest about it. She's always been like, be your own person, do whatever is going to make you happy, sort of thing. Um, my brother was like immediately accepting, like he was really excited. I think he knew that pretty much my whole life that I was trans, but uh, he was super accepting right away. He's only 17, so it's pretty cool that he was so open minded. And, um, he was just awesome, like super supportive, gave me tips on like how to shave and stuff. It was kind of cool, like weird, backwards brotherly moment. Um, but my dad, it took him like a year to be cool. He, for a while, he would still misgender me all the time. Uh, kind of just, he still has old pictures of me in his office. Like my parents don't talk about my transition with anybody that they know, besides like a couple of their closest friends. They, I guess for their safety and mine, probably because they still live in Louisiana, so. Um, but, I don't know, I guess they're pretty supportive of it now, like, he definitely, like, calls me by my chosen name now and chosen pronouns. No, um, I don't think most of my family knows that I identify as anything else because I'm okay with, um, being referred to as she or her, which is what most people see it, like, physically and, like, call me out as. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know if they would be weird, I think they would just probably, like, be yeah, maybe a little uncomfortable and like confused if I explained to them that I could identify as they, them, or he, him. My relationship with my um, given family and my transition um, has actually improved the relationship that I have with my mom. I don't really have a whole lot of contact with my dad. Um, and he actually just found out, I called him, and he was like, oh, you sound like you're sick, and I said, no, I'm actually on testosterone, <laughs> and that's how I told my dad, and I had been on testosterone for about six months, and, uh, he was super cool with it, my mom's super cool with it, and I don't have any siblings, so my, my grandma doesn't know, um, but, I mean, parents just brought my mom closer, and my dad doesn't really care, so. I think that my sexuality and first coming out as queer in a sexual orientation um, way affected my relationship with my family more than my gender identity has because that was kind of the, it kind of weeded out a lot of relationships or like um, people who weren't going to be loving and accepting and supportive kind of ended there and so then when I started you know um, coming into my own gender and exploring my gender uh, those people were kind of already 
go on. Um, and so, but then I've had other relationships with my family, like my mom. I think it's strengthened over time, which has been great. My given family? My, my assigned at birth family? <laughs> 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 Thanks for tuning in to Roaming Gender. To get involved or find out more about this project, visit www.roaminggender.com. If you live in Austin, Texas, join us this Sunday, January 8th, for our fundraiser screening of Season 1. You can find the event info in the Roaming Gender Facebook page. Shout out to Real Ale Brewing Company for donating beer to our fundraiser. Tune in next week for another episode of Roaming Gender, and don't forget to share and subscribe.